If you've been following this entire series, it might seem a little odd to have the title, Jesus Cleanses the Temple, appear at this point in the story. We've already had a lesson with that title, remember? All the way back in John chapter two, we heard about Jesus entering the temple at Passover and how he drove out the money changers. It was one of the first things he did in his ministry. And if you haven't listened to that lesson, you should probably go back and do so before listening to this one. Eric does a fantastic job of explaining just how corrupt and greedy the system of temple tax and temple sacrifice had become. But now, Jesus is at the end of his ministry. And this cleansing of the temple is a second occurrence. It isn't a mistake or a conflict of the accounts of Jesus' life. It wasn't like Jesus drove out the money changers once with Matthew claiming that it happened at the beginning of his ministry and John claiming it was at the end or vice versa. It was actually two separate occurrences of the same thing. Jesus did this twice. But to put this account in context, we need to see one major difference in the encounters. In the first cleansing of the temple, Jesus announced his messianic claim, meaning that he claimed that he was the promised Messiah. It's easy to miss if you read too quickly. See, in John 2, he said, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. You see it? He said, my father's house, meaning that he's claiming to be the very son of God. But that was the beginning of his ministry. That's when he was claiming Messiah. This is the end of his ministry, and he's not making any claims at all. Matter of fact, if you'll remember what just happened the day before, Jesus arrived in town to this encounter of shouts, the people screaming, Hoshana, Hoshana, which means save now, save now. The crowd was acknowledging Jesus as Messiah or Savior. He wasn't making an opening claim of deity. He was operating in the closing authority of his deity. The first time he cleansed the temple, the priests and the Pharisees immediately came after him, demanding a sign. But this time, they didn't confront him until the next day because of the people. See, those people were the ones getting ripped off by the religious institution of the day, and they were completely on Jesus' side. I have a feeling that the force Jesus used in the second temple cleansing was probably quite a bit more severe than in the first go-round. But the point I want us to see is this. Jesus chose to open his ministry by declaring that approaching God should never be made more difficult by the very priests who were charged with keeping the doors open. And remember, John told us in Revelation chapter 1 that Jesus has made all believers into a kingdom of priests unto God. We are now the priests who are charged with paving the way for those who want to draw near to God. Jesus not only opened his ministry with this aggressive declaration, now he's choosing to close his ministry with the same message. This point was so important to Jesus that he chose to get animated and even violent in defense of it. So that ought to tell us something about how God feels about anyone who adds burden or blockade to the process of approaching their Savior. So let's take a minute and think about how this lesson applies to our lives. For those of us who already live in close relationship, daily relationship with God, do we make it easy for others to approach and encounter Him? Or do we make religious duties so difficult that the idea of approaching God just looks like an overwhelming and costly burden? The temple, the dwelling place of God, was supposed to be a place of prayer. That's conversation with God, communion with God, reconciliation to God. Anything we do to hinder that approach or capitalize on that outcome is going to garner the swift and forceful reaction of the Savior. Maybe we should take a look at how we present this gospel of Jesus Christ. Or maybe how we present Jesus himself. And ask if we're adding burden or religion to the free invitation of God to draw near. And just one last thought. Maybe we should ask if we've imposed those costly religious practices on our own approach to God. Have we added requirements and difficulty to the process of communing with God that simply don't belong there? Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. 
I say we take a minute and take stock. Let's do what Jesus did and drive out anything that presents a barrier to man's communion with God for the purpose of reconciliation and forgiveness through Christ, who will Hoshana save now.